Good morning, I slept at this trailhead here. I met these fine folks. Um, they're from Australia. We got Ben over here. Hi. And Emma. Hello. And uh, they're kind enough to invite me over and um, share their meal with me and gave me porridge this morning. Thank you guys so much for that, by the way. Um, maybe you could just kind of just tell your story and why you're out here and stuff, what you guys are doing. We're just on a, a multi-month trip and um, just spending three months in the States based at, in a car here that we've bought and set up to be a little mini camper. Yeah, the fridge, the fridge and reliable power just makes things like very nice. You know, we've got a little compressor drain fridge from um, Amazon. It's probably about 300 bucks. We've got a 300 watt Canadian solar PV panel. Sucker's so, huge. Yeah, it's the same kind that you would see on a normal house. So it's like high voltage, it's 37 volts. Um, and then he's got a surfboard right under that. Yeah, coming down at 37, 37 volts, just, just through the window here. Closes fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, we haven't punched any holes in the car just yet. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just convenient. <laughs> so this is a, um, a MPPT, maximum power point solar regulator. Um, it actually drops the voltage down from 37 to 14 volts. Um, it also has a little app and it's designed to charge these batteries. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries. So they're quite light, much lighter than a lead acid battery. And you can cycle them 80% depth of discharge 3,000 times. So they should last 10 wow. years of heavy daily use. We can, we can hook it up to the front alternator via this, this cord here. Um, yeah, so basically this Victron charge regulator, GBS, lithium iron phosphate batteries, and a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter just off Amazon. And some bus bars and places to hook extra lighting, probably a bit over a thousand dollars. Yeah, you got a great system worked out here though, especially for, you know, electricity and then these bargain finds you've been finding at the thrift stores. Not very organized in the drawer, but yeah, it all just very handy. You know where everything is when you need it. box at a goodwill. Yeah. Yep. yep, it's been home. Yeah, we, so we live in, in the desert in Central Australia and we're off grid. Yeah, we live on a, on a farm with um, a, a date plantation. We have 700 date, mature date palms. Wow. Um, but it's a cooperative property, so there's another dozen other people. And we have a, we have a good supply of groundwater um, and a big solar ball pump. That... Yeah, so we're taking that learnings and coming here and enjoying a bit of forest time away from the desert. Wow, well, thank you so much for letting me uh, just hang out with you guys and learn from uh, what you guys are doing here. Like, this is something I would love to have in the future, this, yep. well, this solar. Simple. Well, thank you so much for the tour, man. <laughs> no worries. Really appreciate it. It was so good to meet you guys. Well, Ben and Emma had to get going. Since I have two weeks, I'm going to stay here and hike all the way up to Tioga Peak. Oh, and it's really a pretty day. Not a cloud in the sky. Perfect temperature. Well, I made it to the point of where I stopped and turned around yesterday. Seems the trail's gotten a little steeper today. Just as beautiful though. Here it is. Gladiski Lake. And then that's Tioga Peak. Oh, this is gonna be worth it, for sure. So you guys might be wondering how all these rocks and stuff were formed. Basically, magma was pushed up from the earth um, through volcanic chambers and uh, oozed out up here. And uh, between the winters and summers from the freeze thaw, um, it, it broke apart into these small little pieces. Pretty neat experience this view opening up together. Oh man. Oh dude. Oh. Whoa. That's Mono Lake out there. And what is this? Uh-oh. 
Oh, it looks like a geocache. Let me set up the tripod. Let's open up this geocache. If that's even what it is, I'm assuming. Let's see what's in here. Oh, nice, a little trail log. Woo, I feel so special. Oh, cool. Let's see the most recent entry. 9-9. -9. So yesterday, that must have been the couple that informed me about this hike. Steve and Ute Dietrich. Heaven is just a new pair of glasses. Wow, I'm gonna go through these and kind of read them, and then I'll make my own entry. Probably be up here for another half hour or so, and then I'll start hiking back. Woo! I freaking did it! Woo! see I got back to the Jeep brushed my teeth washed my hair got some food and I am gonna head into Yosemite this whole trip was kind of planned around Yosemite this is the most special park for me in this trip I don't know why don't ask me why how are you today I'm good thanks good. How about you? I'm well did you need a map and a guide uh can I just have a map please yep. there you go you awesome have a good day. thanks you too Bye -bye. We're doing it, Yosemite! It's friggin' packed in here. Packed! Well, I just got my permit for my first backpacking experience in Yosemite. I'm gonna go to the Grand Canyon of Tuolumne. Um, not a lot of elevation, kind of take my time and enjoy it. All right, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and do another uh, short day hike on the John Muir Trail. Uh, one thing that has always been a concern of mine at uh, Yosemite is bears break into vehicles if you have food in there so under federal federal law you do have to um, put all your view all your food and scented items in bear canisters or no in bear lockers that are located at each trailhead and they're pretty full actually <clears throat> one thing I did notice while I was reading this is um, leaving food or storage in vehicles after dark is prohibited so after dark. So I'm just gonna make sure I come back before uh, it gets too dark and hopefully no bears break in because I'm sure insurance would not cover it. Let's see how full, how full it is. There's some room, but you know, for all the food that I have, there's no way I could fit everything in there. So I guess we're, we're gonna risk it. I just made supper in this parking lot. I'm gonna camp here. Um, the parking lot is at a crazy angle, so it's gonna be interesting sleeping at this angle, but I've just been sitting here uh, looking at maps, kinda planning what I want to do in my route for Yosemite in the next two weeks. It's gonna be hard to see everything even with two weeks. We'll make it work. So I'll show you guys on a map here just quickly uh, what I'm planning to do. So uh, yesterday, I stayed out there at Gradisky Lake. This morning I hiked up to Tioga Peak, and then I came into the park through Tioga Pass. Now I'm over here in Tuolumne Meadows. Camp here tonight, and then tomorrow I'll leave my vehicle in a different parking lot to Grand Canyon of Tuolumne, um, which I'll probably come out this far and just come right back. So tentatively, that's the plan right now. And I might have to change a couple things around, which is okay. You know, that's why I left two weeks for this park. 